All right, this is episode four of how to make a reusable homemade rocket. Today we're going to be making our nose cone. And to do this, you'll want your block of balsa wood and you'll want to make sure that it overlaps the diameter of your rocket tube. You don't want your balsa wood to be smaller than the diameter of your rocket tube because that won't work out very well. And you'll want to use the lengthwise of your balsa wood and not the widthwise. Uh, because you want a longer nose cone than you do a shorter nubby nose cone. If you happen to be making a rocket that is using a more powerful engine like a E or F engine, we're only using C's, but if you're using those heavier engines um, and you have a wider tube and you can't find a block of balsa wood that is big enough for your tube, you can go ahead and uh, glue a couple pieces together and you can have one big balsa wood block actually made up of several balsa wood blocks. But anyway, once you have your balsa wood block ready to go, we're gonna have to turn it into a cylinder. And to do that, we're gonna have to trace the end of our rocket tube onto each end of our balsa wood block, kind of like how we did for our engine mount and our piston. So we're gonna wanna center this the best we can. So we're gonna have to measure the length and width of the end of our balsa wood block. And the length comes out to be about two and a half inches. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my rocket tube on top of the ruler and even out the marks on each side of my tube within that two and a half inch range. That will center my tube on that ruler between those two and a half inches. And then I'm going to transfer those measurements over to the end of the balsa wood block. and my engine tube should fit perfectly on those markings. And we'll want to do the same for the width wise. And it turns out to be two inches even, so I'm going to take my tube and put it within that two inches and center it, and I get about two millimeters on each side. I'll put little marks on my ruler to let me know that those are the markings that I'll need to transfer over onto my balsa wood block. And there we have it. And my tube fits perfectly on those four markings. Okay, so the next thing you'll want to do is trace your rocket tube onto your balsa wood block. Okay, so I noticed that I am off center here, but that's okay. That's not a big deal. We'll just have to make sure we do the same thing for the other side. So I'm about two millimeters off of this one side. So I'm gonna make that two millimeter mark on the same side on the opposite end of the block. That should put that mark directly over this mark on the other side. And we're gonna do the same thing for the three other sides. Now regardless if you mess up or not like I did, you should do it this way to really make sure that your one circle is directly over or under, depending on your preference, of the other circle. Like I said, we're going to carve out a cylinder and it needs to be as straight as we can make it, not lopsided. And to do that, we need two circles directly above and below each other. Okay, and once I have those marked, I'm gonna trace my tube again. And that circle is directly above the circle I had before. So we are good. Okay, so the next step is actually to start shaping that cylinder. So there are actually three ways you can do this. You can either use sandpaper and sand it down into a cylinder which is gonna take you quite a bit of time. Or you can take a box cutter and start shaving down the cylinder. If you do this, be very careful not to cut yourself. Always be aware of your fingers. But then once you get close to uh, those lines where your cylinder markings are, I would switch over to sandpaper to really perfect it in a controlled motion. And the third way you can do it is using a Dremel, which is pretty quick. 
But the way I'm gonna do it is using all three. I'm gonna start out with my box cutter and I'm gonna start shaving down these corners. And once I get close to those lines, I'm gonna switch over to my Dremel and make it even better. And then once I get really close to those lines, uh, I'm going to switch over to my sandpaper so I can really even it out by hand and take my time. Now you wanna be sure as you do this, you never cross over those lines. If you cross over those lines, you're gonna cut into your cylinder and you're not gonna have a very good nose cone. So stay outside of those lines, never cross over them. Pretend that cylinder is already running through that block of balsa wood and you do not wanna cut into it. I recommend that you do this in an outside environment as you will have sawdust all over you and the person you're living with will not be happy with you. And I also recommend you wear safety glasses and a mask so you're not inhaling too much sawdust and you don't get it in your eye. It can be annoying. Okay, as you can see, I shaved down pretty close to the line, but I stopped before I got too close where I could accidentally uh, cut into my cylinder. So what I'm going to do is switch over to my Dremel and Dremel it out and then I am going to switch over to sandpaper. If you don't have a Dremel, just go ahead and use sandpaper from here. I recommend you use a heavy grit sandpaper so you can really, you know, do some do some work on it instead of a, a, a light grain paper that will take you forever to do. So I'm gonna go do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is what your balsa wood should look like. It should be, it should be a wood cylinder, okay? And it should roll pretty decently, but it should not fit within your rocket tube. If it fits in your rocket tube, then you did something wrong, okay? It should be basically an ext extension of your of your rocket tube. It shouldn't fit into it. As you can see, I didn't cut into my lines, except for this one little piece right here. I kind of farmed it on accident. And if that happens, don't worry about it. Um, that can be the top of your nose cone, which you'll end up shaving off anyway as you turn your, as you turn your cylinder into a cone. But anyway, once you have that, you're going to want to find the uh, center of the top part of your cylinder. Find that center mark. You can eyeball it if you're really good at eyeballing it, but I highly recommend you actually do the measurements. Okay, so once you have your center dot, which will be the very tip of your nose cone, we're going to go ahead and measure the distance between the top of our rocket tube and the top of our piston, which, if as from our last video, you can see is about two inches. So we're gonna use about a half inch of those two inches to actually uh, take up space with our nose cone. That's how, we're, that's how we're gonna insert our nose cone into our rocket tube. We're gonna shave down the bottom half inch of our cylinder. So we'll fit in here like this and we'll have about that much left over to hang out and be our actual nose cone, which will provide us with aerodynamicy. So go ahead and take your ruler and measure out a half inch from the bottom of your cylinder and put a little dot. And basically you're just gonna keep rotating that cylinder about a centimeter or two, measuring out a half inch and putting another dot. And do this all the way around the bottom of your cylinder. And once you have all your dots, you're gonna wanna play connect the dots again. Now you can use a piece of thread like before or the elastic shock cord as a guide or you can just do it freehand like I'm doing it um, but you want to make that line as straight as you possibly can if this line is not straight your nose cone is going to be crooked and your rocket will not fly straight up so take your time and do it right the first time all right so once we have our boundary line between the part of the nose cone that will be inserted into the rocket and the part that will be hanging out over the rocket. We're going to go ahead and sand it down by hand. Okay. We want to make this very, we want to make very precise sanding movements. So we're going to do it by hand and we're never going to cross over that line we drew. We're always going to stay on the bottom part of that line, checking after every couple rotations of sanding to make sure that we're not sanding it too much. Okay. So once you have it sanded to perfection, it should be snug, but not so snug it's hard to come out. You should be able to twist it while it's in there, but it shouldn't just pop loose with some shaking. All right. As you can see, I can pull mine out 
with relative ease, but if I shake it, it, it just won't come out. If I jerk it upside down, my piston won't push it out, okay? And now if you sanded too much um, because you went too fast or whatever, or you didn't pace yourself, I kind of invented a fix for that. You take a hot glue gun and lightly put a little bit of hot glue around the inner rim of your rocket tube and then smooth it out with some sort of pen or a popsicle stick or something. Let it dry and then that will create more friction for your nose cone. But chances are it's going to be too much glue and you'll have to sand down some of that glue and then try again over and over again until you have that right consistency and that right amount of comfort for your nose cone. So once it's finished it should look just like this. Okay, and the next step is to turn our cylinder into a cone-ish looking object. Now I would just sand that top rim towards that middle point that you have. Okay, and you can sand it down to point like a, a ice cream cone, or you can do what I did and I made kind of like a bullet shape. I didn't sand my the top rim of my nose cone all the way down. I just sanded it part way and I got that nice looking bullet shape. That's the type of nose cones I prefer. But if you want to make yours really pointy, you can go ahead and do that as your nose cone. All right, so once we have our nose cone the way we want it, the next thing we want to do is attach it to our the top of our piston. So we'll cut about five inches of shot cord, same shot cord we use to attach our piston to the rocket tube. And of course, I'm going to singe the ends of my shot cord so it doesn't fray. And then I'm going to make an incision on the top cap of the piston towards the back end. Okay? Now the reason it's towards the back end is so the nose cone shot cord won't get in the way of the pilot chute and get entangled. Because if your pilot chute gets entangled, it may not deploy your main chute. So put that incision towards the back and away from where the pilot chute will be resting on top of the piston. And once it's through, you can go ahead and put down a bead of super glue and hold that down for 30 seconds and let it dry. And once it's dry, go ahead and put some more super glue down on that and really secure it. And then go ahead and attach the other end of the shock cord to the bottom of your nose cone. Go ahead and put a bead of super glue right there in the center of the bottom of the nose cone. Press your shock cord down onto it. 30 seconds, let it dry. And again, secure it with some more super glue. And then you can take a pen. It could be a pen just like the pens you use as stopping pens for your piston and press it down through the shot cord and into the bottom of your nose cone. This will be the final you know, mechanism, if you will, that we use to really hold down that shot cord to our nose cone because we don't want that nose cone flying off and putting all our hard work to waste that we did on that nose cone, shaping it and getting sawdust all over us. And once that pin is in, go ahead and glue that down as well. Okay, and there you have it. Let's test it out. 
put your piston shot cord in the rocket tube, feed your piston down in the rocket tube, and then push it all the way down until it hits the stopping pins. Insert the shot cord for the nose cone and then the nose cone itself, and there you have it. Perfect. Your nose cone is complete, and I will see you in the next video when we do our fins.